Hi all, this is Byron Dully, coming to you from the Aliaskan interior in Fairbanks, Alaska, and welcome to Serenity, the Arctic Schoolie. This is a channel where we'll explore what it's like to purchase, build, work in, and explore, and live in an Arctic Schoolie, or as my wife likes to call it, a Yuli. That's Y-O-O-L-I-E, or a Yard Schoolie. It's being based out of your backyard randomly, selectively, especially in the winter up here in the subarctic, leaving your yard for trips, for water, uh, especially in the winter, leaving to get water every two weeks or so. So I hope you all enjoy. Okay, let's address the issue of thermal bridging. Um, there's different types of thermal bridging. There's random, there's repeating, there's non-repeating. Um, this is what you're looking at as an example of repeating. So you have underneath this shell, a metal shell in snow, metal support beams going parallel to one another. Where they go parallel to one another, there's an out, outer skin and an inner skin. Inner skin inside the bus, outer skin outside the bus where the snow comes on. When they all connect through pieces of metal, that's the thermal bridge that brings that cold, icy air, snow, moisture into the warm bus. And that's what that is. That's what you're seeing. And then there it is on the side of the bus also. Um, and that's behind our what we had was our dog's um, crate and uh, it created a space in there but as soon as we took the crate out and let the warm air get in there it went away and of course it drips down into the mineral wool but on this wool bus it drips down out and mineral wool uh, doesn't really collect mold and mildew and this bus kind of is designed to do that so that's, that's a pretty dramatic example of, of it um, you can really help that also with a dehumidifier. Watch your humidity, keep it down below 60%, really 70% and you're good. So here's something else. Deaf. Yeah, this is a sign that you'll eventually see when you should get a deaf bus. If you get a deaf bus, uh, I think we're all gonna have to have those uh, five, 10 years from now if you're still into bus life, schooly life. And then you're gonna see these warnings that come up and they kind of really freak you out whether you're a long haul trucker or, or a schoolie driver. Engine warning, oh my gosh, a warning sign comes on your bus, now what do you do? And it goes from just a warning to the next step you'll see in a minute is a D rate, which means it'll slow your engine down to blinking, it'll shut your engine down. But you can avoid all that with a diagnostic tool. I'm not paid, but I use a diagnostic tool made by OTR Performance. Uh, they're kind of the I think one of the better ones, um, again, I'm not getting compensated. Um, you get a subscription and a tool, and then you can get an app, a diagnostic tool, a link adapter, a physical tool, and then uh, the OTR app. And literally, as you drive down the road, you can shut these, eliminate these, turn them off, reset them. You can do it three or four times as you're driving down the road in the middle of nowhere in minus 20 degrees, like I have, where you normally have to pull over your bus and shut it down or you can cancel out these these uh, warnings. And so that's that's something that's, you know, is new and is needed. They're extremely expensive. You have to renew your subscription every year, but really you couldn't go on without it. I pay six, $700, I think, for a subscription per year, and then another two or $300 for the tool. And then an example of the app here is coming up. You can get a look at what the app looks like. Um, and uh, you can reset your after treatment, you can force a regen, um, you can reset default codes, either manufacturers um, or, uh, it, they're just really helpful and you couldn't really, um, I think if not only a fleet of trucks, you know, run a deaf bus without one. Um, so that's something that people think about. Also, here's an example of fuel, this winter of 22-23. That's liters. That's about two thirds of our tank um, in Whitehorse, Canada. So that was a shock. But then when you look at that and you see, wow, uh, no airfare, no rental car, no hotel room. It actually came out cheaper for the two of us to, my wife and I to go to Canada from Fairbanks and take our dog and our cats with us. Uh, it's just much, much cheaper. And then here is an example of, this is the weight of our bus. So you, everybody can see what our bus weighs, even though it's rated, thir thir rated to 36,000 pounds. Hey, welcome back to the studio. This is up the mountain. This is my hermit hovel. You might've heard me talk about. It's a place I build in the Willamette National Forest 
lived on and off for three years, three months in the summer without really leaving more than maybe once or twice a, a month. And then um, in the school year, I would normally work at a school and I'd dr commute 150 miles round trip every day to and from my my hermit hovel, if you will, my tiny house. Um, I had come back from Japan, um, sorry, Japan and Tibet and just didn't really feel like getting back into the normal life of living here in the U.S. and so I, I did this for a while.